Now a new insult in Victoria, where popular rock climbing sites are supposedly uh, being banned to preserve rock art, we're told, the Mount Arapiles. Although how much is there up there? Joining me is geologist Mark Hendricks, who's been campaigning for the right to climb other mountains banned for Aboriginal cultural reasons. Mark, great to see you. Now it's Mount Arapiles, the climbs there that are threatened. Should they be? Uh, Andrew, absolutely not. Look, this is ridiculous. Um, the, the beating heart, the, the, the Arapiles represent the beating heart of rock climbing in Victoria. You know, combined with the closures that have happened in the Grampians, this is absolutely devastating for the climbing community in Victoria, in Australia and internationally. You know, what Parks Victoria have done now is basically every climber in the world will just be crossing off Victoria as a climbing destination. They'll be looking at other places in Australia and saying, well, if I go there, I'm going to be made to feel guilty about enjoying the natural world. They're going to go somewhere else. The impacts on the local economy around uh, Mount Arapiles will be devastating. There's a small town there called uh, Natimuk. Um, a lot of climbers actually live in Natimuk and they enjoy that, that beautiful uh, uh, climbing community in, in that area. If no one's going there for climbing, that, that community is, is economically dead. You know, the Parks Victoria, it's, it's hard to say, you know, what the reasons are. You mentioned some of the, the, the rock art and, and some of the Aboriginal heritage. The paintings at Arapiles are so faint that you need specialised camera equipment to see them. Um, Parks Victoria are talking about changing it into a cultural tourist destination. So they're going to be taking, what, busloads of tourists to see rock art you can't see. Uh, the other Aboriginal heritage in Arapiles are rock chips. So certain rocks at the base of some of the climbing routes were used by Aboriginal people uh, as a source of, of, of stone. So these are quarry sites. So all that's there are evidence of, of, of rock scatters, some rock chips, it's probably the least impressive bit of, uh, of, of cultural uh, heritage we've got in, in, in the country. It's not, nothing like what we've got at Kakadu or at Ayers Rock. Um, so uh, it's, it's completely ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Parks Victoria, Andrew, have not even bothered to consult uh, the, the main stakeholders. They've said nothing and, and, and done absolutely nothing in terms of speaking with the rock climbing community about the impacts of these bans. It's, it's crazy. Honestly. If you care about that rock painting, then stick a frame around it. Uh, if you care about the chips, pick them up, put them in a museum. Otherwise, uh, let it go. I mean, how many places are we now banned from climbing? Well, we've got, we started with Ayers Rock. We've got Mount Gillen. We've got Mount Warning. We've got the Glasshouse Mountains in, in southeast Queensland under threat. We've got the devastating climbing bands in the Grampians and Arapiles. It's, it's just growing and growing, this list of places where people can't go. The other strange thing in New South Wales, which is occurring recently, is that this, this new apartheid is spreading to campgrounds. So there are campgrounds in New South Wales now where parts of those campgrounds are re reserved for particular Aboriginal groups. So they're, they're segregating the community. It's, it's a, a incredibly bad policy and it's going to have devastating impacts to Australian society if we keep going down this horrible route. You know, we, we, we're going to, what, the New South Africa now? This is, this is just insane. Um, Elon Musk, oh, you know, you've part, part of this... Uh, Gingin Falls in, yep. uh, in uh, Kakadu. You've forgotten Lake Eyre. There's a move to ban uh, human, uh, you know, tourism on, on the lake and sailing and all that. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, it seems to me that this is actually divisive. It, I'm not sure it helps many people. It's, it's incredibly divisive, Andrew. You know, we came out of uh, a very divisive 2023 when the government tried to push uh, this, this voice down our throats and the community said a firm no to that. And if this was put to a referendum, you know, these climbing bans, this, this, you know, our, that our access to awe and wonder in Australia will be based on race, Australia would be a resounding no as well. So I would love to see some of these things actually decided by the people Very rather than having woke point. politicians and woke public servants make these decisions for us. Elon Musk was given the task, well, hopefully we'll be given the task by, uh, by Donald Trump to, to clean the swamp out in Washington. When he's finished there, Andrew, I hope he comes down here and starts cleaning up the swamps that are in Macquarie Street and Spring Street because we need to Mark, refresh ourselves and, Andrews, and get this I think policy over. On. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, I think you're spot on. A bit of democracy would be great. Thank you so much for your time.